Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about heart failure in pediatric patients. Heart failure is a disease in which the heart is not able to pump properly to supply the body with oxygenated blood. It is a quite common disease in adults, but in children the clinical picture and causes are different. 80% of the children that develop heart failure develop it during the first year of childhood and in 50% of those it is due to a congenital anomaly of the heart. In the others it is an acquired condition that damaged the heart. Now we will talk about the pathophysiology of pediatric heart failure. There are two mechanisms involved. The first is the increased cardiac workload. Many infants experience heart failure due to the heart having to work harder than it usually should. Even though the heart muscle is able to contract properly, enough blood will not be supplied to the tissues. This can be due to a left to right shunt or a valvular insufficiency. This type of heart failure is called high output failure as the heart is able to contract but not to bring enough oxygen to the tissues. The anomalies are numerous and we will talk about them in a separate video. I just want to mention the one you can also see on the poster. It is called Epstein anomaly and there the tricuspid valve is displaced into the right ventricle and one of the two leaflets of the valve are attached to the heart wall while the third and last one is usually floppy and unfunctional. It is one of the anomalies that often leads to heart failure early in childhood. The other type of heart failure is the reduced myocardial contraction. This is also the type that most adults suffer from. This type is characterized by a reduced myocardial contraction. It can result from myocarditis or chemotherapy. In neonates and young infants, it can also result from obstructive lesions as aortic stenosis or coarctation of the aorta or from severe hypertension. Simply said, the problem is either an overcirculation, so when the blood mixes inside the heart because of a congenital problem, or a pump failure, when the heart cannot pump properly. So how do children with chronic heart failure present? There are four cardinal signs, which are tachypnea, so faster breathing than normally, tachycardia, so a faster heartbeat than normally, cardiomegaly, and hepatomegaly. Some patients may additionally also present with poor weight gain, fatigue when exercising, or in the case of a very young child, fatigue when feeding, and also sweating. On the poster you can also see the comparison of the clinical classification of heart failure in adults compared to children. How do we diagnose heart failure in a child? We can do different blood and urine tests. We can for example test for the B-type nitriuretic peptide, which is often high in cases of heart failure. This protein is secreted by the heart to keep the blood pressure stable. Also, a chest X-ray can be indicated. Sometimes we can see alveolar edema, consolidations and pleural effusions. An ECG can show arrhythmias, tachycardia and also problems with the contraction of the heart. Left atrial enlargement, for example, causes a characteristic P wave. In an echocardiogram, we can see if there is a congenital anomaly of the heart and we can see how the heart pumps. With a cardiac catheterization, we can measure the pressures inside the heart. Here a catheter is introduced from the arm or groin and is led into the heart. The treatment of heart failure is done with four different types of medications that can be used according to the needs and presentation of the patient. The first group is inotropes. They are used for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. They stimulate the heart to contract more effectively and increase the pumping force, 
and may also increase the heart rate at which a heart pumps. The next group is diuretics. They help to eliminate excess fluid accumulations in, in the tissue and help the burden of volume overload on the heart. These are especially used when a patient presents with edema due to heart failure. Used are furosemide and potassium sparing diuretics as spironolactone. Children usually show edema by tachypnea and dyspnea rather than peripheral edema, as they are often held on the arm of a parent and so they are commonly for long times in a supine position. The next group are agents that reduce the afterload of the heart. Those are for example nifedipine and captopril. They act vasodilating, so they make the blood vessels wider, reduce the blood pressure and help the heart to be able to pump out the blood better, as the pressure in the vessels will be lower. They also help the cardiomyocytes to recover as they prevent further myocyte injury and allow for recovery. The last group is beta blockers. They are used in patients with chronic heart failure as they improve the left ventricular systolic and diastolic function, help to control the heart rate and prevent severe arrhythmias. They also lower the afterload and preload. We can also help the patient by providing oxygen. It should be administered additionally, but not long-term. Long-term supplementation of oxygen can have an effect as a systemic vasoconstrictor and so can increase the afterload. Mechanical ventilation can be considered in the acute management of severe heart failure when children present with respiratory failure due to fatigue of the respiratory muscles. Also, fever and anemia should be treated when they arise. The anemia is usually normochromic and normocytic and similar to an anemia of chronic disease. It usually improves with the treatment of the heart failure. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like our channel, please subscribe and like. Thank you and hopefully see you again in the next video.